join the church, join with the Satanists, so you can save the church. But and, and one of the members. Yeah, that's a very was, interesting point. You're raising a germane point because most people don't understand that this pope, it, it, whether or not he wears, I don't know what he wears or reads. The man is espousing naked Marxism. Everything he says is out of the uh, is out of the book Das Kapital by Karl Marx in populist terms. So he is a communist through his rhetoric. The question is, how is this possible when the Catholic Church was opposed by communists during the Bolshevik Revolution? For example, they burned churches and killed priests. The communists did. And this church was long anti-communist. How did they suddenly uh, join with the communists? Isn't that what you're saying? Yes, but this is not the church. It says right in the Bible that there will come a time when there will be a false church. And uh, one of the members for Jeff was telling me how uh, he says, we're going to change the church. So Sorry, you're breaking up. I don't mean to interrupt you, but when people can't hear you, they, they'll turn my show off. We're getting a lot of callers right now, as we, we usually do at this time, as the show comes to an end, and people realize that there's no Savage now for 21 hours after I leave. And they turn the radio off to either watch television or make dinner for their families, go about their daily business. Uh, they want to get on the show, so they're lining up. I don't know how to summarize today before we take a break and come back for the last round of today's battle with the realities of the world. I don't know how to summarize what's going on in the world right now other than to say, uh, are you perplexed? Are you perplexed? Because you're not alone. If you're really a person who has a reasoning mind, you have to be perplexed by what this monster is doing to America and the world. It makes no sense. Like this last caller said two callers ago, how could this man, this, this incredible creature in the White House, how could he be on the side of Iran and against Assad when Assad is supported by Iran and Iran's troops are actually fighting anti-Assad rebels as we speak in Syria. Assad's troops will be joined by Russian troops and Iranian troops against all of the anti-Assad elements which would include which will include some of our own troops fighting besides them incidentally and have been for a long time, surreptitiously, surreptitiously, uh, according to all sources I have read. Which side are we really on? Does anyone really know who's running this country? Is the country schizophrenic? Is the leadership totally berserk? That's why you're perplexed. That's why you're perplexed. It's that simple. Let's take a caller on the, any of these topics. KCMO Radio. Tom, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Yes, uh, I've been watching the speeches of Trump, and, and he's talking about Ford going to Mexico and Nabisco going to Mexico and, um, and, and charging them 30% tax of bringing products into the, into the country, which is a great idea. I believe in Trump. I believe in what he's doing, but I am worried that he's giving the motive and the special interest, interest group's motive to assassinate him, you know, and I don't want to see that happen, you know, he's completely exposed to his speeches, there's people all over the place that's near him that can get him, I want him to live, I want him to be a leader country to, uh, to... No, you're raising an issue I can't even address, because we're all worried about a man as honest as Donald Trump, all the rest are a pack of liars, and they're surrounded by, by, by agents and secret service on the Democrat side, no one could get near them. I'm, I'm very concerned about Donald Trump's bluntness. I'm concerned about his family's safety. I certainly am. And we have such enemies of the truth that everyone should be concerned for this man, even the haters. But, you know, the haters would cheer uh, anything that happened to him. You know that, don't you, Tom? Exactly. One of the things he brought up was one of the people who's going to handle the, his negotiation for Chinese Japan. He says the guy's name on the air and he's basically, he might as well expose him, too. You know, all they would have to do oh, is... Oh, you're talking about one of the great, great operators on Wall Street. The guy is incredible. He could out-negotiate China for sure. Absolutely. That guy's name on the radio, and it says who he's going to use. He's no, what, he, he lives in a free country, doesn't he, Tom? No, so he's I... Willing to stand, he's willing to stand up for a free country, as are all of us in radio. I would, call them my co I would call them my colleagues, but they're not my colleagues. But everyone in talk radio, fr frankly, takes the same risk on a lesser, to a lesser extent. But we're all putting ourselves out there, Tom. It's only when millions of us start to do it that we have a chance of succeeding. Tom, stay in the line. Give us your name. I'm giving you away a free copy of Government Zero, 
which will be in the warehouses very soon. My last and most important of all political books, it's, um, I think, going to be a collector's item for my fans, for sure. And a general audience will find me for the first time for one reason. The title is so compelling. They're going to walk into a bookstore. It's going to be everywhere because its uh, first printing is 150,000 copies. Mark that down in San Francisco. 150, 000. 150,000. Now compare that to the average book published, uh, written by a, a liberal. They print probably three or 4,000 copies. A novel, maybe 300. A San Francisco author, maybe they print 30 copies to give, to give away in coffee shops in the Mission District. So Michael Savage, they're going to print 150,000 copies. It's going to be in every store in the country late October. It's my, my magnus opus called Government Zero. I'm not going to tell you what's in it, but I'm starting to give them away today. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I like die from here on the California where I live. A nightmare. A nightmare. Nightmare. 100 degrees here, 107 degrees there. It's not global warming. People don't even understand the history of weather here. I remember I was reading a few years ago that in like 1885 or 18, 1887, it got so hot in the Central Valley of California that cornfields caught fire. Now, so far as I remember, that was uh, before the uh, Model T Ford was on the road. But don't tell that to Jerry Brown. It's an inconvenient truth. Don't certainly tell it to the community organizer in the White House, the Fuhrer, it's an inconvenient truth. But nevertheless, we have a heat wave that's beyond, I hate it. I've lived here since the 74 in, in the San Francisco area. I've had hot spells. This is a nightmare. San Francisco's nice right now, 69 degrees. But inland, you can die from it. A, a nightmare. 97 in Petaluma. 106 degrees in some areas. 105 up in Santa Rosa, 100 it's in human temperatures. In human, not global warming. It's just weird. Thank God we got the marine layer coming back in. We're gonna be relieved from this soon. I can't wait for the weekend. Some fog comes in. I almost pray. It's enough to make me into a pagan. The god of fog. When the god of fog comes in, I actually get down, light a candle to him. I don't. I'm thinking of it. Maybe I should start a, a, a like a religion. The fog church. The first church of fog. And we could pray for fog when it gets hot next time. <laughs> that would be fun, a burning man. We can say, that, what do we mean the burning man? Who would go to a thing like that in a heat wave like this? I'm going to go to the fog man concert. That's the one I want. I want to lead the fog man concert. Santa Cruz, a once great place, what they did to it, the liberals. You can't even go there. And he said, you can't even go to Santa Cruz. You take your life in your hand. Gilroy, the uh, garlic capital, 106 degrees. Garlic likes heat. Garlic likes heat. Grapes like heat. Uh, I am not a grape, nor am I made of garlic. I'm a human being. I hate heat. I, I know people like heat. I don't understand why they like it. Women generally like heat. The, the men like heat. Most women like heat for some reason. They're always cold. It's like, brr, and they like warm weather. Men, I don't know. The men like heat. Maybe some do. It works well in Arabia. They seem to do very well with it. 69 degrees in San Francisco. Going down, no less. I love you can go in there with a coat tonight. I'm not going to talk anymore about the politics. I'm, I'm burned out. It's enough already. It's enough already. I can't take it. There is no Congress anymore. Remember, we, we used to play the song, There's No England Anymore. I'm writing a new song called There's No Congress Anymore. I don't know what tune I'm going to write it to, but I'll figure it out. Spare the air status in the Bay Area. So the lunatic neighbors of mine who burn fires even in the heat aren't allowed to do that tonight. All the, all the liberals. I love it. How is that possible that lib liberals who are for everything for the environment burn fires 300 nights a year? How is that even possible? How can a person who calls themselves a liberal pollute their neighborhood? How, are they, how do they have the brains for this? They're giving themselves and their children cancer. The neighbors don't exist for them. Yeah, there's no Congress anymore. Right, I get it. That's a great song by the Kinks. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you didn't, you're sick in the head. Come back for more tomorrow. It's the Savage Nation.